The Goldman-Hodgkin Katz or GHK equation is used to calculate membrane potential. And again, even though you won't have to do any actual calculations with it, you can see that in some ways it kind of resembles the Nernst equation, at least in the sense that it takes into account concentration gradients. Those are represented here as the outside concentration of an ion over the inside concentration of the ion. The major difference between GHK and Nernst, though, is that the GHK equation takes into account the permeability of the ions. That's represented by the letter P in the equation. Again, Nernst just assumes that we're completely permeable. We can really see this relationship between the Nernst and GHK equations if we make the permeability of two out of the three ions zero. That essentially reduces the GHK equation down into the Nernst equation because now the only thing that would be setting membrane potential is the concentrations of the single ion that's still permeable. Again, in that situation, it's the only situation actually where membrane potential and equilibrium potential would be the exact same thing because we're only permeable to one ion. So now membrane potential will equal the equilibrium potential for that ion. So changes in membrane potential are ultimately the basis of all muscle contraction and all signaling in the nervous system. So this really becomes critically important across the next couple of units and into next semester. Based upon everything that we know up to this point, we know we have two ways to change membrane potential. The first would be to change the concentration gradients for the ions. But again, that's really difficult to do because of homeostasis, and it usually comes with many side effects. And that's why we typically see that happen only in a laboratory or in a state of disease. The other option that we have is to change the permeability of an ion. And that's something that's relatively easy to do because every single cell has a whole complement of ion channels that it can decide to open or close if it wants to change the permeability of sodium or potassium or chloride ions. So here again are five practice problems dealing with changes in membrane potential, and we are applying the GHK equation. So again, with questions like this, you have to reference the table up at the top, which will remind us of the equilibrium potentials for each of the ions, as well as the relative permeabilities of each ions in the initial conditions. As you think about the changes that would occur when you make different manipulations, you should again try to phrase your answer in terms of membrane potential becoming more positive, membrane potential being more negative, membrane potential staying the same, or membrane potential becoming zero. So again, you should try to do these on your own first so that you can see what you don't know, but we will take a closer look at some of them when we're in class together.